hundred years ago, there was a surge of interest in communicating with spirits, despite it being prohibited in the Judeo-Christian traditions. The rise of spiritualism in the 19th century challenged traditional beliefs about connecting with the deceased, fueled by social, technological, and scientific changes of the time. The phenomenon began with two sisters, Maggie Fox and Kate, in Hydesville, New York, in 1848, who claimed to communicate with the spirit of a murdered peddler. Their popularity led to a national tour that contributed to the spread of spiritualism in the United States and beyond. Prior to the Fox sisters uncovering messages from the beyond, telegraphs were already transmitting messages through electrical wires using Morse code. The mysterious messages conveyed during seances were likened by experts to the spiritual version of electronic telegraphy. Jeffrey Sconce highlighted in his 2000 book Haunted Media – Electronic Presence from Telegraphy to Television how spiritualism sought to associate with electrical science to differentiate mediumship from more archaic forms of mystical beliefs. I'll link to his book in the show notes. This scientific religion drew a swift following, expanding from its roots to Britain and later to the rest of Europe. Adherents included individuals from rural areas, urban middle classes, as well as intellectuals, scientists, and aristocrats. By the 1860s, spiritualism flourished in England and France. The Frenchman, Alan Kardec, introduced a variant known as Spiritism, marked by a belief in reincarnation. His publication, The Spirits Book, released in 1857, gained widespread readership, extending beyond France to South America and Russia by the 1870s and 1880s. During the Civil War in America, spiritualism saw a surge in popularity as the bereaved turned to seances to connect with deceased soldiers. It is estimated that the war prompted two million new followers to join the spiritualist movement. By the 1880s, the movement had expanded to encompass eight million followers across the United States and Europe. Although interest in spiritualism declined in the early 20th century, the twin calamities of World War I and the Spanish flu pandemic reignited public fascination with the practice. Some spiritual entities were believed to communicate through a medium known as a spiritualist. One renowned trance medium was Lenora Piper, based in Boston. Piper was noted for channeling various figures, from the famous, like Johann Sebastian Bach, to the lesser known, such as an enigmatic Frenchman named Dr. Finuit. The voices she channeled sparked significant scientific curiosity, particularly under the investigation of American psychologist William James. Despite thorough study, James was unable to definitively determine Piper's abilities, leaving open the possibility that she could access a cosmic consciousness that potentially included spirits. Spirit photography emerged as a method to purportedly capture images of ghosts using techniques like double exposure. This form of photography provided a means to connect with departed loved ones. Interest in the spiritual realm extended into the realm of photography, where some photographers claimed to capture spirit images alongside living subjects. One notable figure was American photographer William Mumler, credited with capturing a spirit in a photograph in the early 1860s. In a famous image, the ghost of Abraham Lincoln is seen behind his wife Mary, hands resting on her shoulders. Mumler was later accused of fraud in 1869, although he was ultimately acquitted. While the allegations tarnished his career, spirit photography remained popular for years to come. When spiritualism emerged in the late 1840s, it faced significant skepticism. In the 1850s, British scientist Michael Faraday famously discredited the practice of table-turning, where spirits were believed to move or manipulate a table during gatherings. Faraday quietly insulated the table to prevent any external influences, demonstrating that the movements were actually caused by the participants themselves, without their conscious awareness, a phenomenon known as the ideomotor response. Skeptics also revealed how mediums used manipulation techniques to deceive. Dim lighting and emotional vulnerability, particularly in times of grief, made people more susceptible to suggestion. These strategies led Maggie Fox to confess in 1888 that the mysterious rapping sounds during her and her sister's seances were simply the result of them cracking their knuckles and joints. One of the most dramatic critics of spiritualism was Harry Houdini, the renowned American escape artist and illusionist. 
Houdini's friendship with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, a fervent believer in spiritualism, soured in 1920 when Lady Doyle, a medium, claimed to be channeling messages from Houdini's deceased mother. Recognizing the messages as falsifications, Houdini openly condemned spiritualism, causing a rift between him and Doyle. In a bold move to expose spiritualist tricks, Houdini demonstrated how mediums could make bells ring under a table during a performance at the New York Hippodrome in 1925. Houdini transitioned to becoming a committed investigator, exposing fraudulent psychics and mediums. Armed with his background as a magician, he possessed a sharp understanding of their deceptive tactics, detailed in his 1924 publication, A Magician Among the Spirits. Following Houdini's passing on October 31, 1926, his wife Bess conducted Halloween seances annually in an attempt to communicate with him. To detect imposters, she and Houdini designed a covert code before his demise for communication if his spirit could connect from the afterlife. Despite her efforts over a decade, he never made contact. Although interest in spiritualism has significantly dwindled since the 1920s, adherents persist, with some observing yearly Halloween seances in the hope of reaching Houdini.